Hey, how's it going? I'm gonna fly my drone up and get some footage. Yeah, I don't think so. Why is that? Can't do it. Can you tell me why? The police officer yesterday said it's okay. I checked and it's not against the law and I'm a reporter, so. Okay, well that's good for you, but uh, there are FAA regulations, so no, if you want, not we for here. Call, well, I'm not here to make that decision. Okay. So. So when we, we have an app and it says if it's not allowed here, mm -hmm. and it is allowed. Okay, well. Okay. That's so fine. you're gonna tell me I can't follow the law? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not telling you anything, okay? So I'm you, not the law out here. Okay. But what I'm telling you is that... I'm going to do it right here. You're going to tell me I can't document the What I'm saying store. is you're not going to park here because this, number one, this is private property. Okay, where do you want me to park? Okay. You're going to try to pay me into a corner and I'm not going to play Sure I am because... If you want to do something else, go in another area and do it. I'm going to go right over in that corner. Okay. All right, thank you very much. God bless you. Mm. Are you going to prevent the press from documenting itself? <laughs> That's what I'm here to do. Okay. This entire area is closed to the public. I know. Well, I already know that. Oil companies do not want me to document this. All right, then leave me alone and let me document this with my drone and go away because I'm not doing anything illegal. You're in a closed area. No, I'm not. That's a closed area. This is not a closed area. This is a public road. So, they do not want us to document this oil spill. And the largest spill in history happened in my hometown. They killed 40 miles of fish. We have 100 people with cancer, 7 kids with leukemia. I mean, come on. You guys don't even care. I'm not saying I don't you care. You are saying it when you're saying that I'm a half mile away from the spill and I can't even be here. You want to change the barricades so press cannot document this. We're here to keep the public out, keep the press out. Why? That's what we were. Why? That's what I, we I'm were. out. I am not going in there. Even though I'm hazmat qualified, I have my gear in here, and I legally could go through there, and you couldn't stop me because I'm legally qualified. You might be qualified, but you're not with the crew. I don't have to be with the crew. I am the press. I am legally qualified through hazmat with gas masks, even though they're not wearing them, and the kids are sitting there on the other side of the street being poisoned. You guys are letting the kids over there right now, right next to the spill. So they're being poisoned down there, and you're arguing with me because you don't want people to know the truth. And you're an expert, right? I am an expert. Okay. I'm the number one guy in the United States at this. What's your Whether, name? John Bolenbach. I never heard of you. Because you don't give a shit about the environment. So go ahead and keep preventing the press from going out. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to put my drone up, and if you want to arrest me, go ahead. Because I will win in court. I've won every single time against these oil companies every single time and guess what if i do get arrested i get to go to court and show all my footage that i got yesterday all of it it'll be in front of a jury and that's what i want go ahead and arrest me i can appreciate your concerns and i can appreciate what you guys then are trying leave to do me alone About 30 minutes. So that trip, was that a full battery? No, it was about, it comes back on its own, but I just, I got one more spot I want to get and then I'll come back. and leaving all those families across the street. It's, it's just like they know they're poisoning them and they don't care. For real. I saw you didn't want anybody down this road because it's, it's not safe. They live there. But it's not safe to be there, you said. No, it's not safe, sir. No. Oh, so it, it's not safe for reporters, everybody.
Tonight, our I-Team takes on accusations of an Enbridge cover-up. Last July, a pipeline owned by Enbridge ruptured in Marshall, sending hundreds of thousands of gallons of oil into West Michigan's waterways. Now a former Enbridge employee is blowing the whistle on the company, accusing it of covering up oil. One former worker is doing everything possible to get his story out there. A former worker blowing the whistle on Enbridge takes News Channel 3 on a tour of sites he claims still have oil, but the company is not coming back to clean up. John Bolenball still finds ice packed with oil and is making strong accusations against the company. They were trying to meet deadlines, so what they would tell us to do is take dirt, put it over the top of the oil. They were telling us to take mud with uh, oil and throw it into the woods. They were telling us to rake dirt over the top of oil. And he says because he wouldn't do those things, he was fired in October after two months on cleanup operations. But Bolenbaugh believes the so-called smoking gun is near Talmadge Creek in Ground Zero in Marshall. I just wanted to prove that this is, uh, uh, this is all oil. It is all oil. This is not mud. Mud will freeze. No, that is not oil. That, that's sediment. It's mud. And that's what he's standing in is mud. All right. See, there's no sheen. The reason why that's important is because when I dig down, the oil is underneath the sand. See it coming up? It's under the sand. It's yeah, not right. in the sand. It's under the sand that they put there. Can you see that? Yeah. The whole thing. It's all oil. See this? They put this over this entire area. It's all canvas. They plant grass underneath of it. The grass will pop through. This is all oil. I don't like doing this. Jeez. But the only way I'm going to get people's attention just to do this. I think this if you were a kid, I think if you were a kid playing right now and you fell in that, a little kid out here by yourself. You'd be done. You'd be, you'd be stuck and you'd die. And that's what's really weird. I mean, I was shocked when I got this uh, deposition to come in and testify because I'm thinking John was let go for speaking to the public, taking pictures, showing the, you know, and, and, and talking about the health hazards and the way they were handling it. And he was right. He wasn't lying. And, and yet, Mr. Jacobs, So why this wouldn't is that be a relevant to the case? He got fired for, for speaking out to the EPA, to the public, to the people. Yeah, I tried to forget about all this stuff because I don't even want to think of what I've done to my body. That, that Like I said, I, I'm 55 years old, and in 10 years, 15 years, I'd love to be able to retire and relax and enjoy my gold years. Am I going to end up sick and dying because I work for a company that worked for another company that wasn't that we were not allowed to wear the proper uh, personal protective equipment that we should have been wearing because of let's not. Was it emotionally stressful to you to have to cover up and leave the oil? Absolutely, I live here. It was emotionally stressful to see that stuff simmering on the top of the water and not wearing mask and wondering. Is this, is this going to be a problem down the road for me, you know? And why, are they, and why are they even moving us on? It was emotional stress when they were saying, there's no more oil here, you need to move on in the water, on the land, the whole nine yards. Yes, it was very emotional. I live here. You're all going to be gone, you know? Your companies are going to be gone because most of the companies weren't from here. weren't weren't from Battle. There was no environmental services company in Battle Creek. It was all from out of town. A lot of them were out of states. You know, it wasn't there. They weren't going to be sitting here breathing this stuff. They weren't going to be sitting here canoeing in the rivers. They weren't going to be the ones dealing with it. You know, so it was very. It was it was sad to see that happening, and it made me go. Why is the EPA doing this? Why? Who? Who's paying the? Are there? Are there crooked EPA people that are that are saying go ahead? It's good, you know, because ironically they end up coming back. So what? They lie. We knew they were lying. 
we were out there still getting oil up and it was shimmering on top of the water when the benzene, you know, and we were looking at each other going, there's no more oil here? Okay. It was ridiculous. It was very emotional straining. Moved to strike you know? all of the witnesses. Very emotional. That I, you can see how emotional orders. I am in this whole hearing over it. Think about it. Move to strike all of the witnesses' testimony that violates the court's orders. Well, I don't think any of his testimonies violated the court's orders. Other people live here. My children are growing up here. You know? Did, did it stress you out to know that the improper cleanup efforts and the covering up of the oil would affect the natural wildlife, the animals, the fish, etc., that would be within those areas? Objection to the question. As well as the people, correct, yes. And, and you can tell how I'm emotionally stressed even having to come here and talk about it. I didn't, you know, this is stuff that I buried. That I got over, I said, screw it, it's done, it's over, I've moved on. But now it's all like, you're, you're, you can see I'm a mess. You're bringing up stuff that I didn't even want to think about anymore. And I have to tell the truth. I have to. And this isn't for John. And this isn't against Enbridge. And it's not a personal vendetta you. You're doing a job, you're representing. you got to do that to the best of your ability. Or you wouldn't be worth your job. And it's, this is not a personal attack. And I, and I am being very, I'm emotionally stressed from this whole thing, from what I went through. And it's bringing up these memories. I'm fighting back tears right now. You have no idea how upsetting this is. I did not want to come here and talk about this today. Darn them for what they put me through and the, and the other workers, you know? Because seriously, if, this, if, if somebody like him wasn't out there doing what he did, they would have been gone the first year, maybe the two years. This was not a plan that was going to go on this long. They were forced to come back and do more. You're talking about the him being Mr. Bowling Mr. Bowling Ball. My question earlier, though, was I understand that you're... But seriously, we all should have. Most of the people... And John, John at one point, when we were out there, he looked at me when, when, when that guy said what he said. He goes, Kevin, you live here, too. You're going to tell me that this doesn't... I said, yeah, it bothers me, but I may... I said, I don't know, John. I don't know what to say. I was out... That was an emotional stress for me. What do I do? Do I do the right thing? Or do I make that money I need to make to take care of bills and family and stuff? It was like, what was the point of us even being out there? Oh, I know. To make $22 an hour. How much... And, you know, and, and be honest with you, if I had to do all over again, I would have quit. I wouldn't want any part of this because I, I could I could imagine because John would dug into this deeper and I know this goes on all the time this is just big money big corporation you know this ain't the first place that's ever happened but this is my hometown you know this is where my kids live and where my cousins and and my father and mother grew up and you know and I I was quite the outdoorsman growing up you know we never had to worry about this stuff before Move to strike all the testimony that violates the court's orders. Well, we were talking about emotional, right? Emotional yeah. stress. That's, yeah, I'm emotionally stressed. I, I can't even imagine what he's been through out there trying to get all this out to the public and and not and not turning his back on it like a lot of us did. Move you're, to strike the testimony. You're talking about him being John Bowling John Bowling Ball. I'm sorry, I think we need John Bowling Balls in this world because obviously Kevin Jacobs didn't step up and I live here and there's a whole bunch of other people that worked on this river crew that lives here. And it's sad that we all did the same thing that Enbridge is doing. It's all about the dollar. A Michigan man is on a mission in Arkansas urging people affected by oil spills to demand oil companies come clean with neighbors. KRK Force Dustin Barnes spoke to this whistleblower in Mayflower where some families are really still grappling with the fact they may never move back into their homes. Dustin. That's right, Brittany. John Bolenbaugh has lived through an oil spill. In fact, he was part of the cleanup crew sent to clean up after a pipeline rupture that spilled into the Kalamazoo River back in 2010. He tells me he was fired from that job because he spoke out against the oil company's deceiving practices. I've been traveling all over. When John Bolenbaugh goes to a town, he wants everyone to know he's there. 
the victims of the oil spill, and yes, even the oil companies responsible for it. I don't care what they say. Bolenbaugh talks to some of the Mayflower families displaced by the oil spill, and even those who live near the site who say they're affected by it. These chemicals that you breathe in, some of them say that it takes an entire year before you'll even see signs. He tells neighbors not to believe everything ExxonMobil says either. He warns them not to be fooled by money. Several Mayflower residents have gotten cash for the company's inconvenience. They don't open a clinic for the sick people or the people that will get sick. They won't ever spend money that way because they don't want nobody to know about that. Res Bolenbaugh hopes his message stops the covering up but exposes so these folks can live in peace again. I want to stop the lies. I'm so sick of the lies. Yeah. yeah. So... Uh, yes. Yeah. I want to share a, a couple things uh, just to validate what John is sharing. This isn't an issue out in Michigan or in Canada or in North Dakota. This is an issue all over the country. I do expert witness work for envir environmental law cases. I've worked on a lot of pipeline cases. And everything John's sharing about pipelines is valid. What you have coming out of your tap, if you t have it tested, the, the EPA only requires you to test for you know a couple dozen different uh, contaminants of concern, but there's thousands of contaminants of concern, and the treatment processes that we're using aren't complete, and w this is a big issue. It affects our water supply. It affects the air we breathe. If your home is on top of land that was contaminated by one of these pipeline releases, the vapors, the benzene that he talked about, can be coming into your home every time the barometric pressure co goes down. It comes into your home, and you breathe it, and you don't know it. So your work's very important, and I, I applaud applaud you for what you're doing. I'm behind you. And I've got a lot of the science and engineering that validates what you're up to. And I encourage you all to take a stand for what John is doing. Thank you. Yeah.